Good morning, church. What a wonderful day to express our gratitude to God as we worship together. Let us know you're here and greet your friends in the comments section this morning. You'll want to gather some supplies for your worship space also. We'll light a candle together during our call to worship. We'll have a time to give of our tithes and offerings, and we'll gather around the table for a time of communion. So gather those elements. Whatever you have on hand will work just fine. And kids, do you have your new worship bag that was delivered to your house this week? You'll want to have it right beside you so that you can help tell our new story today. As we prepare to celebrate the season of Thanksgiving during November, Katie and Sarah have a special announcement to share with you this morning. Hey church, Sarah and Kimberly here. We want to thank everyone for the donations and the volunteering that's been done so far towards our effort to provide 50 Thanksgiving meals this month. But we still have a ways to go to reach our goal. Right now we have about six meals at the church. In order to reach this 50, we really need your help. So we have included the necessary items in the midweek update. Um, you can pick them up while you're shopping and deliver to the church. You can donate fin financially, or if you're shopping on Instacart um, or shipped, um, feel free just to get it shipped to the church for us. We'll be reaching out to those 50 families through calls and texts and inviting them to our church on November 21st to pick up their meals. Yeah, so please reach out to Sarah and myself if you have any questions. Um, please um, let us know if you want to volunteer to help us pack the bags and if you would like to help deliver them on um, pickup day. Thank you again for everything, and we look forward to giving you an update soon. I light this candle in the knowledge that just as there is one God, there is only one light. And the light of this candle and the light in your heart are the same. And where that light shines is a sacred and holy space. Will you join me in this call to worship? In deep gratitude, we come to worship God, who is the source of all goodness. Generous God, we are your people, and you are our God. 
And so we come with grateful hearts to show our gratitude in song and prayer. As we continue to worship, let us sing together, Morning Has Broken. church. I just want to give a few comments about what's going on at the church and, and sort of introduce it in this way that when I came here, that's why Sue and I came here, we, we wanted you to know that uh, we've done a lot of moving in our lives. Um, the standard transition plan when we did move was to find a house, move into that house and make it a home, and then as soon as we could to find ourselves a church home. When we came to Birmingham in 2011, uh, we found that house after, after several months. Um, we worked at making that house a home. And then we started searching for churches. We went to lots of churches. We went to lots of services. We, uh, we were sort of like Goldilocks. We were going from place to place. Uh, we were looking for that, that right bowl of, uh, I guess, preaching porridge. We were looking for something that was not too hot, not too cold, just right. Well, we wanted to sit in these pews and see what was going on around us. And once again, we were looking for those, those chairs or pews that were not too hard, not too soft, but just right. 
that we came to First Christian Church here on Valleydale. And immediately, you could just feel that this church was just right. This was the right community of Christian believers that we wanted to not only be with, to be associated with, to be part of their family with. And so we decided to join this church. There was so much, um, the, the combination was, was that right touch of faith, love, outreach, togetherness, caring, and quite simply the grace of God was, was quite evident everywhere. But every home, even this home, always requires just some tweaking and tuning. It requires mindfulness to, to take care of things. Many of you will remember the, the, the great amount of rain, the deluge of rain that we got here, and oh, the roof in the Northex leaked. We took care of that. Um, after years of loving and a lot of use, our gym floor started to look a little ragged. We fixed it. Now, what was a little different that approached us as a problem was this, this virus, this sinister virus that not only affected us, our community, but the entire world. I'm guessing that most of us had no idea in January 2020 that Zoom was going to be part of our normal speaking pattern and that we would have Bible study by this thing called Zoom. I'm pretty sure that most of us thought that Facebook was to share pictures of our children and our grandchildren, not to have our service so we could sit at home in comfort and listen to our ministers pass the word to us. That was our reality. That is our reality. And we had to have that to keep our families connected. Well, I'm of the firm belief that this COVID thing has only temporarily kept us apart, physically apart. We're still together. We're still connected together. But this congregation, in my, I am absolutely convinced this congregation will come back stronger and unquestionably more robust. Now, to provide the congregation with a true live worship experience and connection, this church is going to move forward. Now, the church leadership recently and our devoted pastoral team that has spent an inordinate amount of hours in this endeavor are committed to bridging that which separates us into a more powerful tool of outreach and spreading the gospel. Within a few weeks, a physical transformation in this sanctuary is going to take place. Now, these, these are minor alterations, but they are important alterations. These alterations are specifically intended to connect this congregation, not only today for our current needs, but also into the months and the years to come. When we all physically can return to this sanctuary, our live sermons will still be available here. They'll also be available on the internet so we can spread our message of salvation and love for all to experience through the internet. I believe the good news is certainly that future challenges facing this congregation will be how to parlay, how to, how to make this new technology an even greater tool to make a vigorous beacon for Christ's love to be projected to our neighbors. The, the leadership had, a, had, had votes and the overwhelming support was that we're going to dedicate some $50,000 to technology, to getting absolute robust internet within our building, as well as cameras and all of the ability to live stream and do oh so a multitude of things for outreach. In the coming weeks, you're going to be invited to personally share in this outreach mission uh, from this church. And it's going to be in the form of, yes, I understand, another personal donation. Now, I fully realize that there are a lot of demands on everyone's financial resources. 
But I do ask, and I personally ask you to, to give deep thought and prayer that when asked to contribute to defray the cost of these new repairs, that you give it serious, serious consideration. I want you to know I'm going to. This will strengthen this church and carry us into the future. Now, as we give our offerings this morning, may we do so with the gratitude for the, the new opportunities that God has bestowed upon us and given us so we may better share the gospel with others. May God bless you. Thank you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Hey friends, in our story today, Jesus and the disciples find themselves on a hill, maybe a little bit like this one. And there are people gathered all around. And Jesus sits down and teaches them all day long. And then they find themselves getting a little bit hungry. I wonder what Jesus does. Let's find out. Jesus was gathered on a hillside with his disciples. And when Jesus saw the crowd, they seemed like sheep without a shepherd. And so instead of asking them to leave, Jesus healed them and taught them the way of God. When evening came, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? Philip answered, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for them to get even a little. But Andrew said, There is this boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but it is not enough. Then Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples. And the disciples gave it to the crowd. And the people ate until they were full. And there was bread left over. More than 5,000 people had eaten. And the people said, certainly, this is the Christ. And they wanted to make Jesus king. But Jesus slipped away. I wonder how the disciples are feeling about what just happened. I wonder how the crowd feels. I wonder what kind of king Jesus would be. Thank you for helping me to tell that story today. How exciting is it to hear stories of Jesus making sure that people have enough to eat? How exciting is it to know that the gifts of one small boy made a big difference? What kind of difference can we make? See you next week.
We rejoice in you, God, our God. We rejoice in your steadfast love and faithfulness, a rich feast for our souls. We rejoice that when we wander far from you, losing our way, you do not leave us on our own. You come to us in Jesus, dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. O God who has drawn near, you know us as we are. The songs of praise tell only part of the story. We have wandered down many paths, seeking happiness or glory. We have trusted in lesser gods, looking for safe haven from the dangers that threaten. But fear and anxiety still haunt us. As the world groans with the deep pain of injustice and grief, forgive us for our apathy and indifference, even as we know our souls thirst for you, the living God. Show us your power and your glory. Take our weariness and renew our hope. Take our fears and grow new courage in us that we might join in the healing of this world. Holy One, you meet us in the wilderness of our days and fill us with the bread of life. You meet us in the desert of our loneliness and streams of living water start to flow. We drink deeply of the gift of your presence, even as we pray the words of Jesus, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. About a year ago, I was at a garage sale and I saw a nice radio and um, had a very good price on it. So um, I asked the owner, soon to be the previous owner, if, uh, if it ran, if it was okay. And he said, yes, it's good. The only problem is that the volume is stuck on high and it's it's all the way to the max. Well, it was a nice radio and I thought I liked my music loud. So, um, and I couldn't turn it down. And so I got the radio, but it's not my favorite radio. This is my favorite little radio. This is a mini boom box that I got many years ago. And what I like about this little radio is that it has a pop when you first turn it on. And you can tell that lets me know that I've got my batteries in, it's all charged up, and it's gonna play for me. It does have a little bit of a problem when it comes to the tuning. Um, I try to get the station that I want and I can tell that it's right on the right place, but there's just all kinds of static or another station will jump in. But I can't, then I finally maybe get it on. Have you noticed that sometime when you stand closer to a radio, it'll come in really clearly. And if you touch the radio, it's just crystal clear. I think that's how it is when we are listening for the call of Jesus. Sometimes we have static in our lives, lots of it. Or we move farther away from where we know we should be. And then, though always, it seems, he touches us. Jesus touches us. And we can feel it to the core of our very being. 
When we come to the table, Jesus calls us here, and we feel him touch us at the table through the bread that represents his broken body and the cup that represents his shed blood. We know and we can feel Jesus. Let us remember that everyone is invited to our table. We do this in our church every single Sunday so that we can come close and let Jesus touch our hearts. Jesus calls us. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, November is our traditional time of thanksgiving. Therefore, we give thanks to you, O Lord, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us and on this world that we share. Thank you for your steadfast caring for us through difficult times, as well as our times of joy and celebration. We especially want to thank you for your greatest gift of sending your son to atone for our sins. For all you've done and continue to do, we praise you, O Lord, now and forevermore. We ask that you continue to make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread and the taking of the cup in order that we will be filled with your spirit to follow your commandment, to carry the good news to all. God welcomes all believers to join in partaking of this sacrament. Amen. Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus did the same thing with a cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. As often as you eat this bread, and drink, drink this, this cup, cup. You, you proclaim, proclaim the Lord's death, death until, until he comes, comes again. I'm going to be reading from Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, Ten men with skin diseases approached him. Keeping their distance from him, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, weren't 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner. Then Jesus said to him, get up and go. Your faith has healed you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, we begin a three-part sermon series on gratitude and the powerful role that gratitude plays in our lives. And my aim is that by the time we end this series, 
We are all more grateful people. Our hearts are more filled with gratitude and we have a rhythm of gratitude in how we live out our daily lives. And I know what you may be thinking, what's there to be so grateful for right now? We still linger in the midst of a contentious election and COVID-19 is on the rise again in our own state. And even though it is the season for Thanksgiving, we can't gather in the way that we usually do to celebrate Thanksgiving in the way that feels normal or special. And I hear you. And I feel that too. And that is exactly why this series is so important for us. And let me start with confession. I'm a Gen Xer. I was born into a generation that is marked by skepticism and pessimism. And I can find myself moving toward those traits easily. Not only moving toward them, I can get wrapped up in skepticism and I can plant my flag on the hill of pessimism. So much so that a few years ago, a wise mentor, a wise Christian mentor suggested to me that I needed to begin a new spiritual practice. Get a notebook, he said. Call it a gratitude journal and every day reflect on your day, just that one day and write down five things that you're grateful for on that day. Now, this was not a new idea, but I found myself feeling really pessimistic and skeptical about the practice. It will be rote, I thought. It won't change anything in the world or around me, I told him. But he persisted. It may not, but it will change you. And that's the point. This wise mentor was a member of AA, a person who had been in recovery for many years. He told me that when he was challenged by his AA sponsor to start a gratitude journal, he was not sold either. But I'll never forget what he told me. After five years of looking for and finding things for which to be thankful, he said, I've been forever changed. My grateful heart, it shoves out anger and resentment and leaves me with more and more room for love and compassion. And I believe it can do the same for you, for everyone. And then he introduced me to Brother David Stendelrast and his TED Talk on gratitude. In that talk, Brother David declares, we're not grateful because we're happy. We are happy because we are grateful. That's an amazing thing to think about. So let's say it again. We're not grateful because we are happy. We are happy because we are grateful. And I would extend that sentiment in this way. We are not grateful because we are saved. We are saved because we are grateful. We are made whole because we are grateful. And this is the declaration of our story in Luke today. The story of the 10 lepers is one that many of you probably already know. Jesus was traveling along and he entered a village where he encountered a group of 10 men with skin diseases. Standing appropriately far away, they, they called out to him, Jesus, show us mercy. And Jesus, seeing them, told them, go and show yourself to the priests. This was the only way that they could be certified as healed and clean enough to re-enter society. And so they followed Jesus' instruction, and they went. And as they went, they all noticed that they had been healed. But one of them, when he noticed his healing, turned back and went to Jesus. He fell on his feet in front of Jesus and thanked him. There are so very many things that we could point out about this story. 
But for today, what I want to point out is this. When he went back and he offered his 